Jesus, you are the center. And you are supreme. We worship you, we honor you. In the spirit of lowliness, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. We decrease. And Jesus, you must increase. You must be on the scene. We must be hidden behind the cross. You must be lifted up, Jesus. You must be glorified and admired in our lives, in our homes, and in our churches, in your people in these last days. Establish your throne in us. Establish your throne in the midst of your people. The Lamb on the throne is worthy. You be the center of our focus. Not any man, not any ministry, not any church, but Jesus Christ alone. We surrender our will to you this morning. We give you our love. Thank you for everyone who has come here today. Embrace them. Kiss them. Take away their burdens. Set them free from every bondage and sickness. You are the Lord who heals us. Heal your people. Comfort and encourage your people. Wipe away the tears of your people. We thank you that you are bringing your people into the season of answer. Into the season of singing. Into the season of rich fulfillment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everyone here. Thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Thank you for what you are doing in our church. This morning, speak to us again. Let there be a visitation, Lord. Give us open heavens and let us be touched by God in a very powerful way today. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, we adore you, our lovable and adorable Messiah. In Christ's wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Can you rejoice and clap hands and praise the Lord? <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus. You are everything, Jesus. You are exalted. You are enthroned. On our praises. We give you all the glory, Jesus. You are the center of attraction in this church. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Amen. Amen. The title of today's message is Reformation. Reformation. Reformation means when one system is not working properly, or certain law is not working properly, or something is not really working better or properly, then you form another law or you come up with a better system. Improved version. That is called reforming. Reformation. In Canada, I, I like the word. It says, Sudharane. Sudharna, Hindi me. Sudharna. Do you know 500 years back there was reformation in Christianity? Sudharane, Sudharna. Because the church in those days started practicing lot of unbiblical ways 
for man's salvation specially concerning man's salvation man's forgiveness of sins the church started practicing many unscriptural ways so some people stood up and they said no this is not scriptural what you are doing we have to set things right these things have to change so they literally went against the system that was in the church in those days they suffered for that some were killed but they didn't give up they all stood strong and started protesting they went against those unbiblical unbiblical systems and those people were called reformers and the reformers had five foundational cries which they called five rally cries five main corrections or main areas where the system had to change where the reformation had to come today we are going to see which are those five areas and listen to this message carefully and if you are writing notes you can take down the notes this will help you there are so many christians today don't know how this started they they don't know what what was the reformation how reformation brought a turning point in christianity then how we are all today worshiping in spirit and in truth because there were several people who gave their lives who suffered and stood up at the time of reformation for the truth so we will see those five areas of reformation or five cries of the reformers they are called five solas sola means alone point number 1 the first battle cry was sola scripture that means scripture alone because the church then believed that mankind will be saved by the word of god and by following the church tradition and following pope's teachings and many teachers teachings all this combined together will save man scripture tradition teachings of men teachings of the pope all together will save man the reformers stood up they stood their grounds and they said no scripture alone bible alone will save mankind don't add to the scripture don't minus from the scripture don't add your tradition to the scriptures don't add somebody's teachings to the scripture scripture alone will save mankind in the days of jesus jesus told the pharisees he says you pharisees you have made the word of god of no effect by your tradition you have lifted tradition above the word of god 
you have made tradition more important than the bible you know washing hand is more important than walking in love you see wearing white dress is more important than keeping your heart pure so you make the outward form or tradition more important than the scripture so don't add or minus from the scripture the reformer said scriptures alone will save mankind and i stand here to tell you nothing else it is the bible alone that will save us lift up your hand and say scripture alone scripture alone shout hallelujah now let's go to the second the second thing the church in those days believed grace along with all the punishment that you give yourself for your mistakes will save you grace plus you punish yourself penance you punish yourself for making mistakes and works all together will save you the reform the reformer stood up again <laughs> and they said no grace alone will save you sola gracia sola grace grace alone will save you don't add to the grace of god we are saved by grace not by our works not because we punish ourselves for the mistakes that we did no jesus took our punishment on the cross we don't have to punish ourselves for our salvation g r a c e you know what i'm trying to say g for god god's riches at christ expense jesus paid the price and you get salvation it's by grace you are saved so they all said grace alone come on lift up your hand and shout and say grace alone grace alone, grace alone. okay let's go to the third thing the third thing the church in those days believed faith along with all our good works our givings will save us not just by believing in jesus combination of believing in jesus plus dan dharam okay you give to people you help the poor you help the needy plus all your righteousness all your works all together will save you the reformers stood up again they said no 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 faith alone will save us sola faith faith alone don't add to faith bible says we are saved by grace through faith not by our works our works all our good works are like filthy rags before god not our works no man is saved by his or her good works we are saved by jesus by his grace and by his mercy come on lift your hands again and say faith alone faith alone can you tell me the first one scripture alone second grace alone third faith alone and now the fourth thing the church in those days believed that christ all the merits of christ the works of christ plus the works of all the saints who died before them 
plus Mother Mary. All saints, Mother Mary and Jesus all together will save mankind. Reformers stood up again. They said, no, it's not Christ plus Mother Mary plus saints plus all good people. No, they said, sola Christ, Christ alone, Christ alone saves mankind. Lift up your hand and say, Christ alone. Christ alone. Amen. Don't add to the work of the cross. It's only Christ alone will save us. Then comes the fifth point. The church in those days believed the glory for man's salvation, for man's forgiveness of sins. The glory goes to God plus Mother Mary plus all the saints and finally even to the sinner also. So everybody will share the glory. Little glory to God, little glory to the saints, little go glory to the living saints, little glory to the dead saints, little glory to the preacher, little glory to the pastor, and finally, little glory to the sinner himself. All will take the glory. The reformers stood up again. They said, no! Glory to God! alone glory to God alone they said only the true gospel is that which gives glory to God alone as taught in the scriptures only the true gospel gives glory to God alone as taught in the scriptures So many people stood against that system. They say, what you're following is unbiblical. These things, what we are saying is right. And there was a reformation. Everything had to be reformed. The human instrument was used during those days was Martin Luther. He wrote 95 theses and stuck on the door of the church. And everybody stood and shouted these five battle cries. Can we all shout those five battle cries again loudly? First one. Scripture alone. Second one. Grace alone. Third one. Faith alone. Fourth one. Christ alone. Fifth one. Glory to God alone. Can you clap your hands and praise the Lord? Oh, wonderful Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I like this very much. Amen. Because those people suffered and gave their lives and stood their ground for the truth, today we are all here worshiping God freely in spirit and in truth, following these five things. See how the reformation came. I feel before we take this message further, can we all stand up and declare those five solas? First one. Second one. Third one. Fourth one. Fifth one. Glory to God alone. Hallelujah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yay. So many Christians don't know these things. So, come, let's say that together. Don't wait for me to say one, two, and three. We'll all say it together. Scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone, glory to God alone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is how the reformation came. This is where the turning point was. They protested 
and protestism protestantism was born are you following we are protestants hallelujah amen who are you protestants anything other than this five we will protest but how does this message apply to us now okay now the message starts okay all this time was preparation introduction now we are going to get into the message then what is the message the message is after 500 years again there has come mixture in christianity mixture in these five areas so we have to stand up once again and purify these five areas do you know what is more evil than pure evil what is more evil than pure evil see pure evil itself is evil but what is more evil than pure evil the answer is mixture mixture of good and evil is more evil than pure evil because it deceives many people that's why god said don't eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil mixture in revelation he said you are neither hot nor cold mixture you are lukewarm i will spew you out of my mouth of myself god hates mixture 500 years back there was mixture in the church true and false was mixed so god had to raise up reformers god had to raise up voice voices like john the baptist and they had to reform they had to protest and start fresh again now after 500 years we see again mixture in these five areas there is so much of mixture so the church has to rise up again and say no we will not tolerate all these things let us go into the message and quickly see these five areas how mixture has come in these five areas first one scripture alone those days the preaching was so pure they would preach pure word of god but these days people have subtracted so much from the word of god 500 years back that church added to the word of god tradition added to the word of god human teaching but today they have subtracted everything from the word of god they just catch hold of one one word one teaching and just teach teach saying that is everything that is everything it's all tilting one side any truth if you over emphasize it without the balanced truth on the other side it will become unrighteous it will become an error it will become a mistake you see so many denomination doctrines they just take one truth and go on emphasizing 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 only that the bible says paul taught the entire council of god and he warned people with tears he told the people good news at the same time he warned people with tears today nobody wants the church with tears no preacher no pastor wants the people it's all only goody goody sugar coated messages modern gospel today's gospel they want a god or they preach a god without wrath they want to bring people into a kingdom without judgment 
through a Christ without the cross. They preach Christ without the cross. They preach kingdom without judgment. They preach a God of love, but at the same time, he's a consuming fire. There is no balance. The Bible says in Job 11th chapter, 6th verse, that the wisdom of God has two sides to it. The word of God is the wisdom of God. It has two sides. You should know both the sides of the word of God. As Jesus told Satan, two times he said, it is written. Third time he said, it is also written. We should know it is written and we should know it is also written. For every scripture in the Bible, we should know it is written and it is also written. If you catch hold of only one thing, it becomes imbalance. If you only preach Jesus is son of man, son of man, son of man, but then you should know it is also written, he's son of God, son of God, son of God. You need both. If you just go on saying, Jesus is Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Yeah, yeah. It is also written, he is lion of the tribe of Judah. He is lion, he is lion. You need both. Oh, Jesus came as man. He is man, he is man, he is man. Oh, he is God, he is God, he is God. You need both. Today the church has lost balance. Somebody said, don't seek a church which is close to your house. Seek a church which is close to the Bible. Amen. Seek a church which is close to the Bible. There is so much of false teaching that has come in the church these days. You know why? Because people don't read the Bible for themselves. If you read Acts 17th chapter, 10th and 11th verse, the Bible says Paul went and preached in certain area. That place was called Berea. And after people heard Paul preaching, they'd go home and they'd cross-check those verses, whether what he told was right or not. They were called Berians. Okay? Berians. Now listen. These people, after listening to Paul, they went back to their homes and checked the scriptures to find out whether what Paul taught is it according to the scripture or not? But today, people come and preach anything. They preach rubbish. And our people sit there and say, Wow! Wow! What a beautiful message. No head, no tail in that message. There is nothing in that message. Wow! Do you know why people are deceived these days? Because they hold people's person, the personality in admiration. They wow the preacher. Wow. What a man of God. Wow. What a pastor. Wow. What a TV evangelist. Wow. What a crusade speaker. I want to tell you Learn not to wow preachers, not to wow pastors. There is only one person who is worthy of all our wow. That is Jesus. Amen. I want to tell you today, even if a great preacher, top preacher in the world, stands here and preaches in our church, stands next to me, I'm saying, well, I'll say, okay, yeah, he's a preacher, great preacher. He is also a man after all. I am not going to wow him. Early days, I would wow every preacher. Because those days, I was a child. I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. But now I grew up. I am a man. I think like a man. I speak like a man. I am not going to run after every preacher. In spite of being heavily anointed, mightily anointed, mightily used by God, having all the gifts of the Spirit. Even if they raise the dead, I am not going to say, wow. Because I know one day that preacher also will die. 
After all, he is a man. Church, don't hold people's person in admiration. And I want to tell you today, even don't wow your pastor. Oh, our pastor, he told, he tells so nice, he is very nice pastor, he is different pastor. No! Your pastor is also an ordinary man. We are all same, ordinary people depending on God's mercy and grace. I stand here, Holy Spirit comes upon me, I speak, when I get down, I am just like you. Ordinary person. We will not lift up people. Do you know, in the last days, people will come and initially, they will preach the word of God. They will preach the truth initially. And once they get people's confidence. They win people's confidence. Then they will twist and turn all the teaching. And with all kinds of lying miracles and wonders, they will cheat all the people. This is how the last days church is going to be deceived. Nobody is going to come and say, I'm a false prophet. Nobody is going to come and say, I'm antichrist. Follow me. Then we are very smart. But they will be just like Christ. They will be just like true prophets. And initially they will talk the truth. They will tell the truth. And then they will deceive the people. Once people start wowing them. Oh this is a man of God. Then they will cheat the people. Deceive the people. And that time. If there is a talk among themselves, no, no, what he is doing is wrong. What he is telling now is wrong. Then they will talk among themselves again and say, but initially he told everything according to the scripture. When he came, when he started his ministry, when he was in the beginning, he told everything correct. So yeah, yeah, he is a man of God or she is a woman of God and they will be deceived because they hold people's person in admiration. They hold that person in admiration. Don't hold any person in admiration. Only Jesus Christ is to be admired and adored. That was nice time to say. Amen. The moment you start looking to people, appreciating them, praising them, lifting them up, you are slowly turning into deception. I encourage you, study the word of God. Don't follow preachers. Follow the prince of peace who is Jesus. Follow the word of God. The living and the written word. Find for yourself what the Bible says. Listen to the Holy Spirit inside you. What is the Holy Spirit telling you? Is this man correct or is this man wrong? The Holy Spirit will speak to you. Follow that. More people will come in the last days to deceive you. They are already here. 50 years back, 60 years back, saints of God warned the people saying, we are getting into the last days. Deception is going to come and people are going to come like this to deceive people with miracles, with lying wonders. And initially they'll use the Bible verses, the word of God and they'll deceive people. 50 years back, 60 years back, they gave prophecies and warned the church, we are in those days. Everywhere mixture of the word. No? Messages are so cluttered, mixture is there. There's no pure word of God. People come to me, people write to me from all over the world. They say, brother, we long for pure God's word. Shall I tell you something? There is a famine of pure word of God these days. There are hundreds of churches, lot of TV preaching, but there is famine of God's word. Pure word is not preached. Word in its purity is not preached. Okay, we can talk many things about this, but let's go to the next one. Are you learning something today? The next one. 
what is the next one come on come on grace alone grace alone oh when we talk about grace now these days there are so many things we can talk about grace people have taken advantage of this word grace advantage of this word uh, of this teaching grace they say oh grace of god you can do anything chalta nahi chalta okay yeah you can do any sin because god is gracious jesus died on the cross to forgive you he has forgiven everything and just by using this term grace people have gone to such extreme that in everything there is excess extravagant we don't believe in extravagant we believe in excellent not extravagant everything in every area there is excess 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 oh grace because of grace you can do anything Please listen to these words by a man of God. The heart that has really tasted the grace of Jesus Christ will instinctively hate sin. Anybody who has tasted the real grace of Jesus Christ will begin to hate sin. But today people love sin and say yeah grace is there grace is there. No that is false grace true grace of god will make you hate sin not sinners you love sinners but you'll hate sin today's grace teaching will say oh god is gracious he will give you immediately everything all the riches money will come to you just like that our tendency to pursue instant gratification of our desires in life can keep us away from god's true blessings you know people want to become rich overnight today isn't it everything we want it fast that desire to get everything fast our own for our gratification will keep you away from true blessing it changes our priorities and the enemy uses that to deceive us and keep us away from god today in many places righteousness is not preached holiness is not preached cross of jesus is not preached blood of jesus is not preached only blessing is preached what you can get is preached you'll become rich is preached you'll prosper is preached everything is for you is preached <laughs> all the preaching makes you more self centered dying for self is not preached lead a life of sacrifice to bless others is not preached you are important everything is you charles spurgeon a great man of god said a time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep the church will have clowns entertaining the goats in so many churches there is entertainment if the message doesn't convict you then you are only entertaining people go to meetings go to some services it's only entertainment this man of god this saint of god several decades back back he said the time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep the church will have clowns entertaining goats you know false teaching is easily identified by the fact that it is willingly received by all and is to everyone's liking how to know it is false teaching it is willingly received by all and it is to everyone's liking how oh, everybody
which is true message true preaching true preaching makes you uncomfortable now do you know why many people don't come to our church it makes them uncomfortable but if i change my message and preach good 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 message sugar coated message within few weeks we'll have church packed god loves you god's grace is there for you you do anything you will go to heaven this church will be packed within no time but if i tell you the wages of sin is death you sin you'll go to hell but you turn to jesus repent lead a upright life god will bless you people will not like this there is mixture in the teaching of grace these days therefore god in his mercy help us help us to write a full book entitled real grace so i'll not talk more about the second point you want to know more about real grace get that book so first one scripture alone these days there has been mixture in the scripture preaching mixture in the churches the pulpit has to be purified the preaching has to be purified second thing grace alone no mixture do you know something the true grace of god will make you like jesus are you listening god will not bless the talents that is in you he has given you the talent he will not bless the talent in you he will bless the christ likeness in you god always blesses his son's nature in you and true grace of god will make you like jesus amen anybody comes and tells you grace is there grace is there for this blessing that blessings and they don't tell you that grace will make you like jesus then you know it is cheap grace it is not true grace grace will make us like jesus christ come on lift up your hand and say scripture alone grace alone and now let us go to the third faith alone oh what about faith we can tell so many things these days there are so much of faith teaching everywhere it started well there is nothing wrong with faith there is nothing wrong with confessing the word of god the true faith teaching is correct but people have taken it little further to extreme and they have mixed everything name it claim it gain it everything is for you they have learned to live by the by product of the cross they don't want jesus but they want the blessing of the cross they want the blessing of salvation benefits of salvation thank god for faith thank god for the word of god thank god for healings thank god for the gifts of the spirit thank god for miracles but we will not be satisfied with that we want the person of jesus christ when i say thank god for the word of god it means thank god for confessing god's word what is faith believing that god is true his word is true it's very simple faith is simply following jesus faith is following jesus christ not for something the problem is today's faith teaches people to follow jesus to get a good car follow jesus to get a good house to get a good wife to get a good husband no we don't follow jesus for something we follow jesus for who he is you understood this 
We follow Jesus for who he is. He's God. He's worthy of our worship. We don't follow Jesus to get something. I have come across people. They say, well, we were following Jesus. We believed my mother will be healed. My father will be healed. Brother will be healed. Sister will be healed. Okay. But they didn't get healing. Nothing happened. We thought we'll get our property. We thought we'll get our miracle. We didn't get our miracle. So we left Jesus. Ah, wait, 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 wait. That means you were following Jesus for something. You are not following Jesus for who he is. Following Jesus for personal gain, profit, खुद के फायदे के लिए. No, you follow Jesus for who He is. That is faith. Faith works by love. You love Jesus, you'll automatically have faith. The King. Caught hold of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because they were not bowing to the statue idol that he set. The decree was anybody who doesn't bow to this idol will be thrown into fire. You know that story. So these three young people didn't bow to the idol. So the king said, "Increase the fire seven times." And then he told these young people, "Last warning, one more chance, last chance. Will you bow to this idol, or you'll be thrown in the fire? We will see who will save you. Whether your God will save you from my hand." What did what did these three young people do? They said, "O oh king, our God is able to save us from this fire. But even if He doesn't save us from this fire," We want you to know we will not bow to this idol neither to any other gods we believe in the true god and we'll worship him alone that is faith we believe god will grant us this miracle but even if he doesn't grant this miracle praise the lord we believe him we will follow him we will live for him love him and adore him amen that is faith following jesus christ listen to this one saint of god wrote we desperately need to explore how much of our understanding of the gospel in these days is american and how much is biblical we desperately need to explore how much of our understanding of the gospel these days is american or is it biblical lot of teaching is americano it's come from america it's not the bible you sow into my life you will reap you keep sowing into my life reap you give this much money you will get it you give this much money you will get it you do god will bless you god will prosper you one sided god will make you rich everything is not biblical americano anybody preaches only blessing blessing messages not talking about the crucified christ not talking about character being transformed coming into the image of jesus christ listen to that sit there and say americano everything material material blessing material gain everything is outward it's good to some extent you know yeah yeah but it's all outward There is no Christ likeness inside no lowliness no mercy no beauty of Jesus no purity of Jesus no living for others no giving everything for others It's only how I become rich how I become prosperous no sacrifice and the giving is always to get something the giving is again to get so that I'll get more 
Americano. Let's go to the fourth one. Come on, rejoice and tell me, are you learning something today? <laughs> the fourth one. What is it? Come, come. First one, scripture alone. Second, grace alone. Third, faith alone. Fourth one, Christ alone. Oh, it is Jesus Christ alone. When the three disciples were on the mountain of transfiguration, Moses appeared and Elijah appeared. Peter said, I will build three tents for you. One for Moses and one for Elijah and one for Jesus. Moses, dead saint. Elijah represents living saint. One is hero of the law, one is hero of prophets. I will build three tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. God heard that. Oh, suddenly God the Father came there on the scene. Peter, are you trying to make Jesus equal with Moses and Elijah? Jesus is not a prophet. He is not a teacher of the law. Jesus is my beloved son in him. I am well pleased. He is not just a hero or a good teacher or a great prophet. He is God. Amen. Don't make my son equal with them. When they heard the voice of God, all these three people fell flat. Fell on their faces. And after some time they lifted up their heads. They lifted up their eyes. And the Bible say they didn't see Moses. They didn't see Elijah. They saw Christ alone, Jesus alone. No dead saint, no living saint, no Old Testament prophet, no New Testament prophet, no today's prophet, no today's pastor, no today's apostle, no today's papa, no today's mama, nothing. Christ alone. Christ alone. Jesus alone. Amen. Many Christians they grow up in the church but they don't grow up in Christ. They know the hymns. They don't know him. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> they grow up in church. They don't grow up in Christ. They know the hymns. They don't know him. It is Christ alone. Anybody comes, great prophet, small prophet, miracle working prophet, he makes you depend upon him. I want to tell you, he's a false preacher, he's a false prophet. There is only one person on whom we can depend. His name is Jesus. Amen. Lift up your hands, shout and say, Christ alone. Christ alone. It is just Jesus. Amen. Not anybody else. See how much mixture has come today. I can tell you many illustrations. Like this. A preacher comes and tells. Put 5000 rupees into my account. You know I will recommend that when you die you will go to heaven. I will recommend to Jesus. That when you die, you'll go to heaven. And this person puts 5,000 rupees in that preacher's account. Like this, I can tell you many stories. Let's go to the last one quickly. We'll close. Today, how fast the time is going. Okay. The fifth one. Shout loudly. What is that? Glory to God alone. Amen. No glory to pastor. No glory to worship leader. Not you. Okay. <laughs> no glory to any preacher. No glory to any. 
prophet. I am apostle so and so. Mm -hmm. Prophet so and so. Mm -hmm. Bishop so and so. Mm -hmm. Elder so and so. Mm -hmm. Worship leader so and so. Answer me, what will Jesus say on the last day? Well done, good and faithful apostle. Shout, well done, my good and faithful prophet. Well done, my good and faithful worship leader. Come on. Good and faithful pastor. No. On the last day, he'll tell only one thing. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. Come on, hallelujah. Early days when preachers would preach, they would pray, Lord, hide me behind the cross. People should not see me. People should not talk about me. But today's preacher, they say, we get so much crowd. You know, I have so many fans. Preacher is telling, I have so many fans. He will go away with, just with the blow of a fan. I have so many fans, brother. Human worship. This man has become an idol. He wants people to follow him. People to idolize him. I am prophet. Now please listen. From another country this is coming. Prophetic, prophetic, prophetic. We heard little about Americano. Now from another country. Oh, they'll tell your name, they'll tell your address, they'll tell you all the details. Even they'll multiply little money in your wallet. Listen now. Let me tell you, who is a true prophet? Who is a true prophet? A man of sorrow. A prophet is a man of sorrow. He suffers with his people, for his people, because of his people. True prophets suffers for his people, with his people, because of his people. Look at Moses, how he wept, suffered for his people. And wept and prayed for God's people. That is a true prophet. Above all, he suffers with God and for God because sin and unrighteousness separates people from God. That's why this prophet of God weeps. Weeps. He says, God, I'm weeping for this people. I'm weeping with this people. I'm weeping because of this people. And then I'm weeping with you. I'm weeping for you. Because sin and unrighteousness has separated people from you. It separates people from you. He's a man of sorrow. That is a true prophet of God. Not the one who multiplies money in your purse. Who multiplies money in your bank account. Who does little miracles here and there. Please listen. The modern prophets hope to save the world by being like it. The modern prophets they want to save the world by being like it. You see, look at the style of the prophets today. You can't make out the difference. The lavish lifestyle they have. So much worldly. You can see the glitter of the world upon them. Nothing of God's holiness. Nothing of God's righteousness. No weeping. No sorrow for the sins of the people. They don't know the pain of God. They think they can win the world by being like the world. It will never work. It will never work. The power over the world springs from being unlike it and never from being one with it or integrated with it. God is bringing this message. 
to save people from being deceived don't follow the preachers don't follow the prophets these modern prophets follow jesus christ don't give glory to these people don't get wowed by their gifting they may be heavily gifted don't get carried away by their gifts glory goes only to god to christ alone be the glory the church of jesus christ cannot be the girlfriend of the world and at the same time bride of the lamb of god i repeat the church of jesus christ cannot be a girlfriend of the world and bride of christ at the same time mixture has come into christianity these days mixture has come into this five solas mixture has come into the preachings these days we need reformation again we need those five battle cries again come on lift up your hands and say those five things scripture alone grace alone faith alone christ alone glory to god alone clap your hands and praise the lord oh hallelujah 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 thank you jesus what a wonderful wonderful word today i pray that this message will be buried in your heart and will stay in your heart throughout your life and you will never get deceived sometimes when pastor is not in town people may come some new person may come trying to attract you with their worldly worldly blessings trying to teach you how to prosper and become rich very fast without christ as the center or some people may come to do business god sells is not for business don't make it a den of thieves it's a house of prayer for nations let me close by telling you this true story when martin luther started protesting with his people 500 years back so the church leaders those days did their best to shut him they persecuted him they troubled him they used all kinds of things to shut him but they failed so one day they decided we'll use a new trick when persecution didn't accomplish its goal they said we'll do something else so they spoke to one of his mentors his advisors and manipulated with him and told his counselor see martin luther listens to you you are his counselor you are his advisor spiritual advisor and advisor in so many ways so why don't you go and convince him and they discussed the plan and they sent him so he comes sometimes you have to be careful because even the devil can come like an angel of light So this man comes and he tells Martin Luther why are you doing all these things why you are doing all this Martin Luther said because it is all false what they are doing is false so we have to go against it then this man says yeah you can go against it no problem you have been going against it it's good no problem but you are totally removing it you are totally eradicating all the faults getting rid of it martin luther said yes we have to get rid of the faults we don't need that i want to get rid of it we don't want it 
then this counselor said but people always need something to hold on to martin they need something to hold on to if you take this away from them what will they hold on to martin luther what will you give them what will they hold on to what will you give them martin luther looked up and said we will give them christ we will give them jesus he said give jesus they will hold on to jesus give them jesus they will hold on to jesus the bible says peter preached jesus paul preached jesus john preached jesus philip preached jesus all the heroes of the faith preached jesus true servants of god true prophets of god preached jesus true prophets of god preach jesus true servants of god preach jesus not just the benefits of salvation not just the benefits of the cross they are there but they will preach jesus and they want to see jesus formed in the people we will give christ to the people i want to close this message by telling every church every preacher every pastor and even the congregation give people jesus give jesus to the people world needs jesus give the world jesus give the dying mankind jesus jesus is the one who died for us was buried and rose up again he lives he's alive and jesus is coming again give people jesus come on let us celebrate jesus hallelujah 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 come on rejoice oh rejoice 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus looks like we are having revival amen can you all shout jesus one more time all together still loudly jesus 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 j e yes you yes jesus <laughs> hallelujah let us love jesus let us live jesus let us preach jesus let us eat jesus sleep jesus life be filled with jesus and just jesus let us give jesus to the people let us give this world jesus amen oh wonderful jesus